the separation of powers and federalism is part of that same overall idea, which is protection of individual liberty against majoritarian uh, rule. The framers structured our Constitution to assure that our national government be by the consent of the people. What is federalism? Um, isn't federalism just more power to like the federal government? Gosh, um, I mean, I took a push last year, so federalism. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I went to summer school here for history in tenth grade. I mean, in regards to that, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> federalism. Gosh, I bet I sh I should know this because uh, I used to teach American history and American government. Oh, federalism. Uh, shared power amongst government. So like national government, state government share different powers. It is amazing how many people don't actually know what federalism is when it plays such an important role in our country. That you have to have a strong federal government, you have to have a strong state government, and you have to have a strong local government. And they can only succeed if they are able to work together. Any laws that are not covered by the federal law, then revert to the states. And what is not covered by the state reverts to the county. And what is not covered by any of those three are our municipal laws. And we each control our own little segment. Although the word federalism was never explicitly stated in the Constitution, the concept was thoroughly discussed by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and other founding fathers at the Constitutional Convention and beyond. Federalism is one of many factors that makes us who we are as Americans. The concept of federalism is to have a representative democracy where there are different levels of government working together and separately to accomplish the common goal of making America a prosperous country. Our constitution is the only one that essentially, essentially says that the power truly rests with people. Once you take that authority, that right, and you now bestow a piece of it on a government that is designed through a representative republic to assist you, each level of that government is required to remember that the ultimate authority comes back to the people. And it's funny, people will call me and they'll say, well, you need to tell the local municipality what to do. No, you have elected officials there and it's a local issue. You know, you call me on a state issue and then, if you don't help me, we're going to the federal congressman and then we're going to the president. Well, that's just not how it works. The Founding Fathers' ideals behind federalism are not just seen through the structure of our government but it has been assimilated into the American political culture and has been the foundation of our democracy in many ways. How, though, is it actually applied to American political culture on a daily basis? Let's take a look. I was so excited to receive my paycheck until I saw how much was taken out for taxes. Not only do I have to take out taxes for the federal government, Medicare, and Social Security, but I have to pay taxes for Pennsylvania and for the local government. Federalism is the reason that we are taxed to fund each level of government. All three levels have their own responsibilities and powers, so money has to go to the local, state, and federal government in order to have our country function. Yeah, I guess you're right. We wouldn't be American if we didn't have to pay taxes. I mean, it's interesting because in many ways it is all like a balloon, where if we're pushing it on one part, it's affecting us in another part. And the bottom line, because we're all taxpayers, whether it's the federal level, or the state level, the local level, we have to come to terms with what we want to spend, how much we want to spend, and how we're going to raise the revenues to cover those costs. Taxes are clearly a very important part of the lives of Americans. Federalism applies to our lives and shapes the American people in many ways, and this is just one clear example of that. While some taxes will go to the federal government, others will go to state and local governments. This is because each level of government has their own responsibilities and roles. This shows how important it is for American citizens to vote for not only federal government, but for state and local government as well. We, you, have a, you have many rights in Pennsylvania and in this country when you look at the fact that when you put a vote down, you vote your local people in and they're representing you. You can go to a meeting and say, hey, I don't want this. And you, you, know, you put a label of federalism and you think it's an overarching idea that can be done away with or changed or whatever. And it can be changed and it could be done away with. Uh, 
But what have you got when you do that? As Americans, we all play a part in the system of federalism based on our careers, where we live, and the taxes that we pay. Although it may not always be realized, local and state governments are just as important as the federal government. Federalism gives us a voice in our government and allows us to live freely and with the right to make the changes we want to see. This is why federalism is a key concept of what defines an American.